What a blessing it is for me and Callion to be here with you at Cross Point today and to be able to share our passion for God and His work, uh, especially the work that we're doing together in India. I told Lloyd Newton, who has gone with us, I believe, five times. Where are you, Lloyd? Five? Five times that uh, I wanted to come and say a personal thank you to this church for the support that you're giving to the work in India. We've partnered uh, in that work, and you are a significant part of supporting uh, over 25 preachers and many students who are being trained to be preachers. As a church, you said that's our passion. We want to make sure that the gospel is preached in that part of the world. The passage uh, here on the screen says, Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Let the nations be glad. We sang that at the beginning of the service. I didn't ask for that song. I believe God just inserted it there. I'm sure there was probably a little help from the leader. You knew what we're going to be talking about today. And, and Lloyd has become a great friend and a great ambassador for the work in India and for Christ in that part of the world. And when I first met Lloyd... I didn't know quite what to think of this guy. Uh, he came with a lot of energy and enthusiasm and knew he was from Alabama <clears throat> early. I mean, the kids get up around 5.30 and they go outside and they're singing their church songs in Telugu, which I can't understand anything they're singing. But I heard out the window, Roll Tide! Roll Tide! In this Indian accent. Lloyd was brainwashing those kids, and they had no idea what they were saying. Now, I'm not a huge fan of any football player. As a preacher, I just stayed on neutral ground. I'd go online every Sunday morning, find out which SET team had won and which had lost, and then I could know the members that were going to be sorrowful and those that would be filled with joy and praise on that Sunday. And, uh, of course, you guys in Alabama have had plenty to praise uh, over the last few years, many years, really. But uh, I came today prepared with this wonderful PowerPoint with pictures and slides and uh, tried to load it. It said, file corrupted. File corrupted. Kept saying that. I couldn't figure out what went wrong. And, and as I was sitting down here, I realized I loaded that file in the state of Georgia. And uh, so that was, I'm sure, a problem when I brought it to Alabama. And so uh, the pictures will hopefully, a lot of them be in the class that Callion and I will be uh, sharing between the services. And I want you to see those pictures, but I want to start out this morning with a video. A video that uh, really shows the way two-thirds of the world lives. And we live in a very comfortable place. We sing songs like God Bless America, and He certainly has. And we many times look at our neighbors who have three or four cars, and we only have two. And we feel like sometimes we don't have as much as the rest of the world. Well, this video, I think, will show you that we all have more than enough. The sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now. I see T'was grace that taught my heart to fear And grace my fears relieved 
How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed Through many dangers Toils and snares I have already come Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far And grace will lead me home I don't know about you but when I, I see those kind of images over the years there have been words that have come to my mind and I've heard other people share words that say who but for the grace of God there go I have you ever heard those words and and we begin to realize just how much we have and how much God has given us and we say whoo thank you God thank you God for the way you have blessed me there was a song that uh, acapella sang a long time ago it said that could have been me you know, that could have been me as an orphan begging on the streets of India. That could have been me, an orphan, uh, who was wondering where my next meal would come from. That could have been me, a widow, struggling every day just to find enough food to eat. That could have been me, a person with leprosy, struggling every day. And so we say, whew, but for the grace of God, thank you, God, thank you, I'm going to go home, enjoy my wonderful life that you've given me. Well, as I thought about those words, as I would sometimes say them, and as I would hear them said and even sung, I began to realize that's probably not exactly what God wants us to be saying. Certainly, He wants us to appreciate the grace that He's bestowed upon us, but what are we to do with that grace? I thought about a, a story in 2 Kings, the 6th and 7th chapter. It, it, it would probably be R-rated if you were to actually show what went on in that scene. The city of Samaria is surrounded by an army. And the army, the way it decided we're going to defeat these Samaritans is we'll just sit and wait. They won't be able to get food, they won't be able to get water, eventually they'll starve, eventually they'll surrender. We won't have to lose one soldier. Well, as the days and the weeks and the months go by, all the food's gone, the water's gone, the people are starving. There are two women bargaining over which child they'll kill today and eat, and tomorrow we'll kill your child. And there's an argument uh, over that debate. And the king hears that, and he's brokenhearted. And he goes to God and he prays. It doesn't seem like any relief is coming. At the city gates, there are some men with leprosy. And they can't go into the city. There's no food there. And so they begin to talk among themselves and they say, You know, if, if we go to the army, we can surrender and say, We'll be your servants. We'll do anything. The worst that can happen is they'll kill us, but we're going to die anyway. But maybe they'll show mercy on us and they'll give us enough just to survive. Well, that night, God sends a sound through the army and through the camp of the army of chariots and horses. And, and, and the soldiers are afraid that another army is coming to provide relief and support for the Samaritan village. And so they all leave everything behind and they flee. And as these men with leprosy go into the village... They find the village, as they go into the army, they find the army has, has gone and there's food and there's clothes and there's silver and there's gold and there's horses and they just begin to gorge themselves. They're just eating the food as, as quickly as they can. They're just, they can't believe what a blessing. 
And it would have been very easy for them to say, hasn't God's grace been amazing in blessing us with this wonderful bounty? But after they've filled themselves, after they've eaten all that they can eat and taken all that they can take, it finally occurs to them. And this is what it says in 2 Kings, the 7th chapter in verse 9. Then they said to each other, What we're doing is not right. This is a day of good news and we're keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let us go at once and report this to the royal palace. You see, what they said is, yes, God has blessed us, but He's blessed us to be the ambassadors to go back to our family, our friends, our neighbors who are starving and tell them there's plenty for everyone. Yes, I absolutely believe that God has showered His blessing, His grace upon us as a nation, as a people, but not so that we could just say, whew, Ha, thank you, God. But for the grace of God, we'd be born in one of those third world countries where the if people are just, whoo, I don't want that. Instead, what if every time we see someone who's suffering and struggling in ways that we aren't, instead of saying, but for the grace of God, we change the statement with just two words. Instead of but for, we say because of the grace of God. Because of the grace of God. What He's done in my life, the way He's blessed me, now I need to take those blessings and be a blessing to others. Like the men in our story, to just enjoy the grace of God and to do nothing, it's not right. It'd be wrong. When Jesus came, He was not all about a lot of things that we're all about. Instead, He was all about grace. He came from heaven to earth because of grace. Because of grace, He fed the hungry. Because of grace, He healed the sick. Because of grace, He cast out the demons. Because of grace, He loved the little children. Because of grace, He died on a rugged cross. And so when you leave here today, I want you to leave here with those three words in your mind. Because of grace. What difference has it made in your life and because of grace what are you doing to demonstrate that grace to the world around you it was mentioned that there are ten families that are supporting orphans in the wings children's home in Angol India and I don't know you I wouldn't recognize you uh, you have just faithfully been sending sixty dollars a month to take care of all the needs of those children their food their clothes a place to live where they learn about Christ and education, medical needs, and you will see, and you can ask Lloyd, the best behaved 100 plus children because they know this is where we want to stay. We don't want to lose this blessing that's been given to us. And on your chairs you'll see uh, a way that you can go and, and participate in supporting uh, those as well. You can go to indiamissionsforchrist.org and you'll see a place where you can actually pick out a child and say we want to sponsor that child. You can now give online uh, with, with a credit card. You can send a check, whatever's easiest. And because of grace, you can make a difference, eternal difference in the life of a child. We just received a word uh, from one of those children who now is out in college. He's in the medical field. Before he was begging, now he's in the medical field. And he's going to have an influence, a tremendous influence for Christ that he could have never had if that wasn't an opportunity given to him. And I'll be talking more about that, and Callie will be sharing some of that in the class if uh, you'd like to join us. But I want to go back to this idea about grace and the difference it should make in our lives. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10, this is what the Apostle Paul says, that it was grace that fueled his ministry and his whole life. In 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10 it says, But by the grace of God I am what I am. And His grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. What Paul was saying is, I remember what it was to be on that Damascus road 
to be blinded by that light, to be absolutely certain that I was right in persecuting this group of people called followers of Jesus, called Christians. But on that road, I was blinded and for the first time I saw just how wrong I was and how much grace it would take to forgive me. He many times referred to himself as the chief sinner because he had persecuted the church. But he said, that grace for me was not in vain. And because of God's grace, this is what I do and this is how I live. And so the Apostle Paul encourages every church and encourages the Cross Point Church and encourages you as a member of this body to act upon the grace that you've received. And this is what he says in 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 11 through 12. So we keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of His calling. May He give you the power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do. Then the name of our Lord Jesus will be honored because of the way you live, and you will be honored along with Him. This is all made possible, listen now, because of the grace of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of grace, he says, live a life worthy of your calling. Now, sometimes we take that to mean, well, I just have to be good enough in order to receive grace. No, because of grace. You begin to live a life that, that says, like Paul, this grace that was given to me, it's not going to be in vain. It's going to make a difference in the way I live and the way I act and the way I give. And, and all aspects of my life will be changed because I've received that amazing grace. Because of grace, you have power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do. Your faith, does it prompt you sometimes to say, you know... That's something I ought to do. But I, I just don't know if I can. <laughs> Paul says that the grace of God will be with you and it will give you the power to accomplish all those good things. Don't ever shy back from the Spirit moving you to do something good and acting upon it. And then because of grace, the name of our Lord Jesus will be honored. Be honored because of what you do and because of grace and then this is the one that just kind of gets me because of grace you'll be honored along with him you know I honor Lloyd Newton for saying I'm gonna go it's not an easy trip it's a long trip if you don't like Indian food that's pretty much all you get is Indian food but those people are the most hospitable loving kind people they even fix Lloyd's coffee. And, and Lloyd, in my mind, is being honored because he said, I, I'm willing to go. I want to make a difference. And, and I, I want to ask right now if, if maybe God is putting it on your heart to say, I want to go. Not everyone can go. It's not for everyone. But I believe that in a crowd this size, in a church this large, there's a group that wants to go. I'd like to challenge some high school or college students to go. Those kids will love you. I want to challenge some parents to maybe go with your, their kids. I promise you'll never be the same. It'll change your family forever. I want to challenge some of the elders, uh, some of the leaders of this church, some of those on the mission committee. Lloyd's been going. And I told Lloyd, I said, Lloyd, you're not going to live forever. We need to get some of those young folks from Cross Point to go and join you in that mission work. And so here's my challenge to you. In 2016, I'd love to see a group from Cross Point to go to India to firsthand experience what you're doing because of grace. And you'll be honored for it. And then last it says, this is all made possible because of the grace of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't come to this world for us to just live a mundane basic life. He came to change and transform us to be men and women who act upon the faith that's been given to us and the grace that we've received through Jesus Christ. So here's the big idea I want you to leave with today. Because of grace, 
You have the power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do. You might be saying, my faith doesn't prompt me to do anything. Well, then I challenge you to check your faith. It's not really faith if you're not challenged to do something that maybe you're not that comfortable with doing. Maybe it's giving to support an orphan. You think, well, $60, how am I going to... If your faith's prompting you to do it, you'll be able to do it, I promise you. Faith. Because of grace, you have the power to accomplish all the good things your faith is prompting you to do. And because of grace, a call came from India in the form of a tsunami. I'll never forget December 26, 2004. We, we heard about the tsunami that was affecting all that part of the world. At that moment, we had no idea that eventually it would become known as the worst natural disaster in all of history. 250,000 people died. And we were just a small church in Cumming, Georgia, just getting started. And there was a side of us that said, well, there are other churches, there are other people, someone else can do something. But our faith was prompting us to do something, and, and we collected $35,000 and we said, where can we send it? We heard about the Chintapalli family. This next slide uh, shows this wonderful family that we connected with along the Bay of Bengal, Benkatarao and Lakshmi, parents that were converted in the 80s, have two sons, Rama and Kalyan. Kalyan's with us today. They said, we want our two sons to carry on this work. Rama is the preacher, Kalyan is the one who goes and raises support and awareness and he came to Grace Chapel and he said there's a great need and so we took that 35,000 combined it with some other churches and we built the first orphanage and now an orphanage is there that we've raised 350,000 that houses those children that has a preacher school that 160 plus men have graduated from and the work has gone way beyond anything that we could have ever asked or imagined, but it's because we acted upon a faith that said, do something because of grace. And so you can go and see more about that in the class, but I want you to see this video. It's about nine minutes long, and hopefully it'll give you at least an overview of the work that we're doing together in India because of grace. Until you visited a third world country, we as Americans have no idea really how two thirds of the world live every day. These people work hard, they get up early, they work every day in the fields, in the villages. I see the women sweeping the streets, I see, uh, I see them cleaning out the sewer lines, I see them uh, putting together flowers to be given as an honor to people and it's a very different world it's a world that we're so unfamiliar with as Americans we live in a country with such abundance to see a person that's that's homeless is shocking to us in America and we certainly have them but here it's common it's common to see uh, a widow uh, lying on the street and that's her bed every night uh, we see uh, small children uh, begging just to be able to get uh, a little bit of money to, in order to be able to have some food to eat. Uh, as Americans, we are blessed financially, but it's not just so that we might use those blessings for ourselves. I believe that we claim to be one nation under God. God has blessed us so that we can be a blessing to others. And so we come to this country, India, and this city of Angol, and God has brought us here, I believe, for a great purpose. It is certainly to share with them the physical blessings that He's given us, but more than that, it is to share the, the spiritual blessings that we often just take for granted. As I see these people gather in their, their temples, as I see them uh, worshiping their false gods, for me, it's humbling to see their dedication to their gods that we know aren't gods at all. And then I see our lack of dedication to the one true living God. And so we have a responsibility with all the blessings that have been given to us 
to learn we need to be a blessing as we come into places like this to share how God has shared with us.
by being there for my best you and Lord I give all I can give all of my heart long as I shall live so Lord oh Lord I just want to thank you for coming for coming to my rescue, you come, come to, to my rescue. You come to my rescue. To my rescue. To my rescue. I hope that gives you a overview of the work that uh, is going on in India because of grace, because of your support, because of your encouragement. There are over 2,000 people that will be in heaven because of the work that we're doing together. They've been baptized into Christ uh, over the last 10 years. Uh, the, these children are growing up to know the Lord, many of them coming from Hindu families, most of them Hindu, uh, some from Muslim families. Instead of being carried off into some radical group that would kill Christians, uh, they are being raised to love even those that would persecute them. I could go on and on, and in class we'll give a whole lot more details, a lot more pictures, about a lot more of, of really the good work that has been a blessing there. But what I've found is that the blessing that we bring to them is small in comparison to the blessing that we receive. My wife and I uh, su uh, support two of the children in the home. We've watched them grow up. Uh, we're on our second group of two children. And to see them grow up in the Lord and to be baptized and, and then to go off to school and to tell their friends about Christ. And eventually to grow up and be leaders, I hope, in the church. That's our dream. That's our vision. And you can be a part of that. Last week at our service, one of our members came up and said, I hear you're going to Florence, Alabama. What church are you going to? I said, the Cross Point Church. She said, I worshiped there last week. I said, really? I said, what was it like? She said, it was awesome. They're some of the friendliest, nicest people I've ever met. She said, if we lived in that area, we'd drive however far it took to get to that church. That's a compliment to a church. So you're not just talking about it, you're living it. And that's the difference that grace makes when it comes into your life. It, it, it brings a, a whole new perspective on who you are and what you're about. And so I want to encourage you to get more involved in the work that we're doing. Uh, first of all and foremost, you can pray. Every person here, if you would just remember that work at least once a week. Say, God, I know there's 1.2 billion people in the nation of India who need to know you. And right now, only about 4% of those people have given their life to Jesus Christ. We want to see that nation changed by the good news of the gospel. And so this week, ask yourself the question, what is it in my life that's happening because of grace? This is what the Apostle Paul said about his life and the worth of grace in his life. In Acts 20, in verse 24, he says, But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. If you're a believer and you've received that wonderful grace, that's our challenge, is sharing the wonderful grace any way we can. Don't get me wrong, you don't have to go to India to share the grace of God. Right here in your community, in your neighborhood, you have a mission. It is demonstrating the grace that you've received in Jesus Christ. Not everyone can go to India, but everyone can give. And, and if you're thinking about going, I want you to talk to Lloyd, you talk to me, and you say, I don't know how I'll raise the money. Every year in our congregation, about half the size of this church, two groups go. And we raise the money for those people. There are some people who basically say, I'm not going to India, please don't ask me to go to But I'll write a check. I'll help a young person. I'll help a family go. And that could be a blessing to you and a blessing to this church that will live on for generations, not only in your life, but in the lives of those that you'll touch in India. Now I want to speak to you if you've never received the grace of Jesus Christ. 
It's free. It's available to you today. You saw those people being baptized into Christ. Maybe you're not sure exactly what happens at that place. What happens is that person says, I'm tired of the old life. I want to die to myself. I want to be buried with Christ. As it says in Romans 6, and I want to raise to walk a new life with Him. Your requirement is faith. That you come to Him with that kind of faith. You submit to His will and His purpose in your life. And I promise you, things begin to change because of grace. So if you need to come to Him, don't wait another day. Right now, that faith that has been planted in you is maybe prompting you today to say, today is the day of salvation. To come to Him and receive that grace that He came to give all of us. Won't you come as we stand and sing?